and commerce management and social sciences research today this or international conference is held for the main objective our main objective is to observe the current scenario towards the advancement of common citizen life by improving the theory and practice of various disciplines of business management and economy the aim of the conference is to provide a interaction stage for researcher practitioners from academia and industries to deal with the stage of the art advancement in their respective fields the organizing institutions of this conferences are management institute the warsawa university of life life science poland institute for service management germany college of social sciences and humanities bulehora university ethiopia and research culture society we have already seen the objective of our international conference now let's see let's understand about the our organizing institutes the warsaw university of life science management institute was established in 2019 the institute in its assumptions conduct research as well as disseminates knowledge in the fields of management science and quality and in particular knowledge management digital management or social corporate responsibility the institute attaches great importance to cooperation with domestic and in particular foreign universities and other research entities the institute take care of the high level of knowledge skills and competition of its staff this university is the oldest agriculture university in poland and the fourth of this type in europe its origin date back to 1816 and are related to the establishment of the agronic institute in meremon the advocates of its foundation were steinlo stezik and steinlo potoki and its first director was jezi benjamin one of the best experts in the economic relation in the kingdom of poland now let's see our second organizing society that is the research culture culture society this society is a government registered scientific research organization society is working for research community community uh, sorry research community at national and international level to impart quality and non profitable services society has successfully organized 100 plus conferences seminars synopsis and other educational programs at national and international level in association with different education institutions educational institutions colleges universities are welcome for memorandum of understanding free to sign without any charge for academic academic exchange knowledge sharing and collaboration to organize events with us we are promoting and sponsoring educational events as well as publishing research work in collaboration we also invite sponsorship from the industries corporates institutions and the government bodies for our educational programs then our third organizing institute is bulehora university ethiopia Bulehora University established to play its part in the national efforts of bringing quality and excellence in teaching learning research community community services administrative functions good governance connecting the development of culture and natural resources with technology and its applications the university has laid down structure for relevance and quality of education research communi community service and good governance bhu offers a total of 201 programs of which 100 are undergraduate programs 82 post graduation programs second degree ma and 19 third degree phd 
college of social sciences and humanity is one of one among the eight colleges having five departments currently the college offers 16 bachelor of arts and 17 master of arts and two phd programs in a regular summer and weekend the college has more than 131 on duty and 44 study leave instructors in different fields of study at bachelor level 34 students graduated in june 2021 and 110 students are doing their studies in second third and final year of study very recently the department is launched master of arts in social work program to meet the ground needs of west guji morena and east guji currently 24 students enrolled and completed their first year of studies this college of business and economy is to produce well trained manpower in the area of business and economics that could contribute towards the development of the country along with the production of professionals the college soldiers public responsibility to back up the development effort of the nation through provision of quality education societal problem solving research activities community based service and many others at present cbe has enrolled 3000 undergraduate students and in 11 programs and more than 500 students in seven master programs and more than 35 students in four phd programs are enrolled in its regular evening and distance education programs of accounting and finance management economics logistics and supply chain management and marketing management generally the cbe has around 100 faculty members so these are our organizing societies now in today's conference we have three main keynote speaker four main keynote speaker one is professor joana who is uh, in warsaw university of life science poland our next keynote speaker is dr piotr he is also from the same university poland then professor markus from business administration business administration and service management ostfelia university germany and next dr gumi who is vice president at research and community service bulehora university ethiopia so first i would like to invite professor joana ladies and gentlemen thank you for attendance at international conference on commerce management and social science research This year the conference is co-organized by the Management Institute from Warsaw University of Life Sciences in Poland. The institute and university will be presented at the next presentation by Dr. Piotr Pietrzak. The theme of the conference is very actual and worth discussing. It has a broad scope and great relevance in the context of the current scenario of the situation in the world during the covid-19 pandemic the conference will shed light on the consequences of the coronavirus and will point out the new challenges in commerce management and social science research i would like to take the opportunity to thank you all for contributing to the conference i look forward to meaningful presentations discussions and collegial networking Thank you for spending your time this weekend with us. Have a great day. Thank you very much. Thank you very much ma'am. Now I would like to invite Dr. Piotr. He is an adjunct professor of management institute at Warsaw University. in of life science he received his phd in economics from the faculty of economics life science in 2016 currently dr piotr is the 
chairman of the rector's committee on ranking he is an organizer of international conferences and reviewer of scientific articles in national and international journals his main area of interest is scientific articles of national public management efficiency measurement strategic management knowledge man and knowledge management he is the author of over 70 articles and four books i would like to invite dr pyo uh, good morning europe um, good afternoon uh, india Uh, I prepared a short presentation about our university, the Warsaw University of Life Sciences, and of course about our um, institute, Management Institute. So, um, like it was mentioned, the Warsaw University of Life Sciences is the oldest agricultural university. Uh, in Poland and the form of this uh, type in Europe. Uh, its origins date back to uh, 1816 and are related to the establishment of the Agro uh, Agronomic Institute in uh, Maremont. Uh, the advocates of its foundation uh, were, for example, Stanisław Staszic, and Stanisław Potocki, uh, and its first director was Jerzy Benjamin Flat, one of the best experts in economic relations in the Kingdom of uh, Poland. The Agronomic Institute provided education on two levels, higher level uh, for future economics and uh, managers, as well as sons of um, land owners, and elementary level Uh, for future qualified workers. Uh, the first seat of the institute was the palace of Queen uh, Marysinka Sobieska. The university was allocated um, um, uh, in uh, uh, Ruda Wawrzesza Buraków. Uh, and um, after Poland regained its independence, the university was named the Warsaw University of Life uh, Science, Sciences. And um, nowadays, uh, the Warsaw uh, University of Life uh, Sciences uh, offers 38 fields of study, uh, including, including eight in English, from natural science and technology to veterinary medicine, social and economic studies. There are nearly um, 18,000 uh, students in full-time, part-time doctoral and postgraduate study courses, as well uh, as on the international student exchange. Uh, modern research centers and laboratories at our disposal, as well as the presence of outstanding experts allow us to educate and conduct world-class research and transfer results to the economy, which has an impact on innovation and progress in inter alia agriculture, food economy, medicine, and contributes to the growing importance of Polish science uh, in the world. Our head office is located in the district of uh, Ursyn of Warsaw, but we also have uh, out of town centers, which allow for doing research, experimental work, Um, internships and field exercises. Uh, additionally, we have uh, picture squarely situated leisure centers that are excellent places to organize conferences, scientific and creative meetings, and um, uh, recreation for our employees and uh, students. And uh, here you have uh, our place in the international rankings. So, for example, in the QS World University rankings <clears throat> 2019 by subject, here agriculture and forestry, we have 27th place. <clears throat> the QS World University rankings, Eastern Europe and Central Asia uh, 2020, place 101. The QS World University rankings 2020, place between um, uh, 801 and 1,000, and 
And what is important, we also in Shanghai rankings, global ranking of academic subjects um, 2019, veterinary sciences place between uh, 151 and 200, and uh, Shanghai rankings, global ranking of academic subjects uh, 2019, uh, agricultural sciences plays between 301 and 400. And uh, our university uh, includes 14 um, uh, faculties, Faculty of Civil and Environmental Engineering, Faculty of Economics, Faculty of Animal Breeding, Bioengineering and Conservation, Faculty of Production Engineering, Faculty of Forestry, Faculty of Veterinary Medicine, Faculty of Biology and Biotechnology, Faculty of Horticulture, Faculty of Agriculture and uh, Ecology, Faculty of uh, Sociology and Pedagogy, Faculty of Food Technology, Faculty of uh, Food Technology, Faculty of Applied Informatics and Mathematics, and finally, Faculty of Human Nutrition. Um, our uh, institute um, collaborates, of course, with uh, Faculty of Economics. And um, uh, at our university, uh, we have 16 institutes uh, from Institute of Bio Biology to Management Institute, but also we have Institute of Economics and Finance, Institute of Information Technology, of Civil Engineering, of Mechanical Engineering, or of Animal Sciences, of Human Nutrition Sciences, Food Sciences, uh, Agriculture, and so on. So at our university, we conduct different um, uh, research and uh, of course I want to introduce our institute management institute um, uh, like it was mentioned uh, our um, uh, institute was established in 2019 and the institute in its assumptions conducts research as well as um, disseminates knowledge in the field of management science and quality and in particular, uh, knowledge management, digital management, the social corporate responsibility or public management, especially the uh, measurement of uh, performance of higher education institutions. Um, we uh, also prepared um, the strategy uh, for our institute. Of course, we want to um, collaborate with uh, different institutions all over the world. So the Institute uh, uh, attached great importance to cooperation with domestic and of course, in particular, foreign universities, for example, from the United States or uh, Germany and other research um, uh, entities. So the Institute takes care of the high level of knowledge, skills and the competences of its um, staff. And here you have uh, uh, workers of our university, of our uh, institute. So our director, uh, Professor Joanna Parishkiewicz, and uh, our scientific staff. Um, so uh, we are uh, a small institute because we have only 15 workers. Um, but uh, like I uh, said, we um, uh, take uh, part in different um, international conferences, so we prepare plenty of uh, um, publications, both in domestic and uh, international uh, journals. And uh, what is important, uh, our institute uh, prepared uh, three books, so uh, we have finished three huge projects, and um, uh, we um, have three uh, three books, like I said, Management and Information Technology, New Challenges, um, uh, and uh, this uh, book uh, was um, uh, printed uh, at our university um, uh, bookstore, and we have uh, two books um, prepared with the collaboration with Taylor and Francis, Management in the Era of Big Data, Issues and Challenges, also um, edited by Joanna Palishkevich, and uh, the newest one, 
trust organizations and the digital economy theory and practice edited by Jana Podiszkiewicz and Guanqin Chen. Thank you very much for your attention. That's all. Thank you so much, Dr. Piotre. Thank you very much for detailed information of your institution. Your presentation is very informative and interesting. Thanks a lot for being with us as a guest speaker. We would that like an honor for me. further collaboration in our upcoming programs. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you very much. That was an honor. Now, I would like to invite Professor Marcus. He is a president of Institute for Service Management and working as faculty of commerce and social work at Ostafria University of Applied Sciences campus, Germany. Before he was 20 years investor relations manager for various companies, nine years in the United States, the last year he was researching in Asia and Latin America. His special lectures are e-business and international management, service management and controlling finance. His latest research projects are digital trust and teamwork and intuitions, both financed by the European Union and the state of lower section. His own research is about e-learning and compliance. The current special research project is the global study, digital trust and intuition at workplace. With support of 30 professors, researchers in 13 languages from 18 countries. I warmly welcome Professor Marcus. Some of the attendants may know me from my last presentation I did from Ostfalia University. And thank you so much for introducing our research projects at Ostfalia University. Today, we want to introduce our Institute for Nonprofit Services. That's a non for profit company we started in 2016. And with me today are my colleagues and friends. Frank Nirat and Joachim Delikat, and they will speak to you today as well. So as you know, in 2015 in Germany, we had kind of a refugee crisis. Um, refugees, especially from Syria, Afghanistan and other countries came in a bulk to Germany and we were fully not prepared for that, but warmly welcoming the refugees in Germany. So we thought about doing something because Uelzen, a city where our university is close by in the north of Germany, needed some help immediately to handle all the refugees. There were lots of honorary helpers without any training and experience, just helping wherever they could. As a friend of mine, I then started to fundraise money from the Lotto Sports Foundation, Lower Saxony in Hanover in Germany. So we got funded by the Lotto Sportstiftung. And uh, so we had first uh, finance and we we're very thankful for uh, the people there that supported us without knowing us at this time. And we were kind of a startup company, a startup venture. Joachim Delikat joined the team. He is, uh, has a great knowledge about the lo Ulsen locally. He knows the people, grew up there. He's a member of the local city parliament. He's a lecturer and consultant. And then we started to create the program. First, we did some lectures at Osvalia University 
and Australia University supported us in um, administrating all the activities. We did an, a lecture series of intercultural management. We invited refugees to Australia University. And actually we did the international cooking class, which was a great success. As you can see on the picture, they brought a dog as well and we were feeding them and the news media of Ulsen liked this picture. <clears throat> For immediate help, we also had Lingua TV. That's a German-based, Berlin-based um, language training company that supported us with German language training online via the internet. Then we started to develop the first course program. This was based on a system from um, Hochschule Lübeck, University of Lübeck, and the subsidiary on campus, GmbH, and uh, we started to create the platform. We had discussions with Ilsen Integration Department. We coordinated with Australia University. We had first trial sessions with different e-learning programs and started to put together a train the trainer program. So idea was first that we train all the um, honorary trainer uh, uh, supporters because they started to help without any knowledge. So our idea was we support the helpers. So once the helpers are trained, they can help more other helpers and all these helpers and have better training and can serve a lot of refugees. So that was our train the trainer program. We uh, had support from the local newspaper to make the uh, program public. And then all of a sudden, we had really great success. We have to be very thankful by applications by specialists. We put together our first program meeting in Ulsen with uh, uh, Dr. anna Katrin Auer, Dr. Noemi Hermeking. So we had great uh, academic support. And actually we have to especially mention Dr. anna Katrin Auer who works for Werkhaus GmbH in Germany. That's a great company, I can tell you. They're employing handicapped people in particular and supporting this community very, very well. With her, we organized different courses with certificates. So the people from the, the honorary helpers could get a certificate that they learned the subject. Here you see our picture from the program. Yeah, we also had people from the Ulsen department with us. So we were really international intercultural team. Here's our first uh, initiative course program. We had intercultural integration in science, Dr. Nomi Hammeking, integration courses interculturally by Dr. Anna Kantri Auer, Bachir ECD, and uh, intercultural integration in language promotion. So we had lots of different programs that they could go through uh, to help us then to fulfill their job outside with the refugees. Here's you see a picture where the refugees were at Australia University and we had great success. They love to come to university and see how that is. And we try to help them, the academic uh, students to get into Australia University. And actually the years after we had quite a lot uh, intercultural teams. We had also lots of applicants from refugees at Australia University. Then we started to cooperate with a vocational school in Ulsen. And here comes Frank Nirat into the game with his classes. We tested different e-learning courses and uh, worked together with the local schools who had a lot of refugees, a lot of migrants at the school that were maybe uh, needed some support. Here we have some articles where we then trained the um, the teachers at the university, at, at the vocational school, so they can then better work together with the refugees. So in total, our program was 2016. We had the immediate action for training of multipliers. 2017, we worked together with the refugees. They needed to be integrated into the labor market. We helped them to writing uh, applications, how to get into a company how to dress, what to say, what not to say, you know, all the things you need to know when you're in a different country. 
We had direct support via the intercultural trainings. And then we started our own company. This is now the Institute of, for Nonprofit Services, GMBH. And actually we internationalized our work and ever since we have ongoing lecture programs. So here are some milestones to give you an overview of what we did. We had over 70 courses. We trained over 100 multipliers. And then the multipliers should talk in their respective area to other multipliers. Let's say this is another 100 helpers. So we have trained indirectly 1,000 refugee helpers. And if refugee helper maybe served 100 refugees in his uh, community, so we're coming up to over 10,000 refugees that we indirectly supported during that time. Directly, we integrated around 100 refugees into the labor market with support. And uh, we have about 50 certificates issued to people that made the full program and then got um, a license and degree. Then we uh, connected to other e-learning companies nationally, but also internationally to improve our program. And that was, for example, the Open University of the Philippines, Kaohsiung Open University in Taiwan and Beijing Open University in China. And these people also visited us in Germany. Here you see our second International Service Management Congress at Ostfalia University, where you have the people from all over the world joining and then supporting also our refugee activities. A year later, 2019, we have the third International Congress and uh, it was already a bigger crowd. And unfortunately, as you all know, 2020, the Congress went online due to the pandemic and it's now more an academic conference online. We got invited by Virtual University Network, VFH, at the University of Lübeck. So we had a great panel discussion here with professors from Japan, Taiwan, China, and the Philippines. And it was a great success by reporting what we did so far. Yes, that's me, as you already know from my other lectures here at this wonderful uh, organization. And uh, Joachim Delikat, uh, will introduce himself uh, uh, shortly, what he did here and uh, uh, how he was integrating and, and train the trainer at our train the trainer program. He did all the trainings for the online. Anna Kandrit Auer cannot be with us today. Uh, uh, she's an HR manager at Werkhaus. Um, and then we had the rest of the team, Noemi Hermeking, Pari Niemann, Katrin Giltner, Bacia Isidi, and uh, Dr. Alexander von Ilsemann, she did a great, great lecture on history in Germany in a complete different setup. It was very interesting and the people got very excited about German history. And then Frank Nirat, who is our uh, uh, cornerstone right now in the, in the lecture program, he brings a lot of young people to the program and uh, is a teacher at the vocational school in Uelzen. Please visit our YouTube channel. Um, there are some videos on our work, some documentations. Unfortunately, it's in German explanation, but the pictures uh, talk for themselves. And our institute is located in Suderberg. Here's our address and the email and the uh, internet access, uh, address. And uh, please contact us uh, whenever you want. I would like to ask maybe Joachim, if you briefly talk about our Train the Trainer program. Your microphone needs to be switched on as well. Joachim? The microphone is not on yet. Uh, uh, the picture with me. Uh, kannst du das uh, zeigen, wo ich da mit dem Bild drauf bin? Uh, ja, genau. Wo, wo ich drauf bin, dann fange ich gleich nochmal an. 
Das war das vorletzte Bild. Yes, yes, this is it, yes. Okay, I uh, begin again, yes? Yes, please. My name is Frank Nierat and I am a teacher in the High School of Business, Literature and Politics in Oelsen. Oelsen is a little town between Hanover and Hamburg. I am very grateful to Professor Launa that I am allowed to participate in the project Cultural Integration in Oelsen. Uh, the project started in 2016 after the refugee crisis. I offered many seminars for refugees from Afghanistan, Iraq and Syria to inform them about German culture. Because uh, the refugees who came to Germany knew nothing about German literature, history and politics. Many participated in the seminars and were very interested in German literature, history and politics. I told the listeners about Goethe, Schiller, and Lessing, and about their famous spectacles, Faust, Don Carlos, Wallenstein, Mary Stewart, William Tell, and Nathan the Weiss. And Mr. Delicat and me explained them the political system in Germany, especially the democratic fundam fundamental rights. Then, a second aspect was added, and Professor Launa has explained it. Many of my students have never participated in online seminars. They were very curious and wanted to get to know e-learning. You have to know that there that there was no e-learning in German schools in 2016. That's why my students wanted to attend. And Professor Launer allowed them. Professor Launer, thank you very much. In my classes, there were many students with a migration background. In this respect, I had a mixed audience. All lectures were very well attended. So all listeners thank Professor Launa for this project. When the Corona crisis began in 2020, all students were glad that they already knew e-learning. It was no problem for us to continue the lessons at home in front of the camera when the lockdown in Germany began. Everyone knew how e-learning works. Other students in other classes did not know e-learning and therefore they could not be talked during the lockdown in Germany. They only got over email tasks, but the lesson with Adobe Connect, this is the program of my uh, lectures, with camera, microphone, PowerPoint, and chat strip is much, much better. Especially the immediate contact with the teacher is very, very important. After Corona crisis, e-learning works very well throughout in Germany. But Professor Launer and me, we were the pioneers in 2016. In 2016, nobody knew that Corona crisis comes. Also Professor Launer and I do not. We were very proud that we started the project at that time. Thank you very much for listening and thank you for the excellent organization. Thank you very much. 
Um, Joachim, is your microphone working now? Yes, now it's possible. Do you hear me? <clears throat> yes, perfect. Go ahead. Yes, uh, good morning from Germany, from Uelzen. <clears throat> um, yes, uh, Marco say I'm a personal consultant and uh, I'm a lecturer for laws and so on. And I'm a member of the parliament, uh, the regional par parliament in, in Uelzen. And my job was uh, yeah, to make networking. Uh, because I know the major, I know the chief of the fire department, I know the chief of the police station, and so on and so on. And it's, it's, it's helped help to make this program. Yes, I'm very proud to be a member of the team from Marcos. And we have very fun, many, many fun in the team. And my job was uh, to, as a personal consultant, to, yeah, to, to find the, the uh, teachers. Um, Dr. Hermeking, she, she, she uh, came from Munich. Karin Giltner, she came from Tübingen. Um, Dr. Ilsemann, she came also from Munich. And it's a very, very interesting uh, program. Yes, I can, say, I can say thank you for the organization. Frank says, say, say it. Um, it's very, very uh, good working all together. And very great greetings from Jürgen Marquardt. He's a major here in Wilson. And he also proud to be a team with Markus Launer with Osvaldo University. Yes, all greetings from Germany and have a good day. Thank you for the that you hear me. <laughs> Thank you very much, Chirac, for having us. Thank you, Frank Ferro. Thank you, Joachim, for reporting our um, support. Uh, work for the refugees in Germany and now more and more integrating Germany. And actually, as you all know, we have new tasks to do. We have migrants coming from Afghanistan. And uh, so we are busy working further on this. And we thank you, uh, Jacques Chirac Patel, for this opportunity to letting us introduce our program at this wonderful conference. And we will participate next time again. Thank you very much for having us. Thank you, my dear colleague, Professor Marcus, uh, Professor, I think, uh, Mr. Joachim and Mr. Frank. Thank you all. Thank you, all of you. Now I would like to invite Dr. Bhumi. He is a well-trained academic administrator, currently serving as Vice President, Research and Community Service. Bulehura University for the past one year, Ethiopia. He did his doctorate degree at Punjabi University, Patiala, India, specialized in sociolinguistic stream. In his master's degree, specialized in general linguistics with sociolinguistic stream from Addis, Addis Ababa University. He conducted three disciplinary and two thematic researches funded by Bulehura University and published four articles in unreputed journals within the country as well as outside the country. He is having 13 years of experience of teaching and research in higher education. He served as community service director and dean of student with Bulehura University apart from his academic work. He is married and blessed with one child and also fluent in speaking, writing, reading, and listening to Afan, Oromo, Amharic, and English. I heartily welcome Dr. Gobi. Thank you. Thank you for welcoming me. Um, you already introduced me. Uh, uh, I'm Gumi Boru uh, from Ethiopia, Bulehora University. Um, and also a uh, member of uh, a regional parliament uh, in Oromia Regional States, Ethiopia. 
uh, dear eminent speakers, guests, and academia from all over the world and from different walks of life. Uh, I have nothing to share you uh, on the screen, but uh, I have to speak about my university to this uh, research culture society. I'm delighted to welcome you uh, as a Florida University uh, Research and the Community Services Vice President. So I hope through this conference, we would like to engage with all of you in an open and constructive comments. I mean, dialogue about uh, commerce management and social sciences research. Saying this, I would like to uh, tell you about my university uh, uh, for you. Uh, Blehora University was established on November 28, 2008 uh, in Ethiopia uh, with the aim of taking part in national efforts to bring quality and excellence in teaching, learning, research, and the various community services. Uh, the university was officially established by proclamation number 13, 2011, as one of the Ethiopian government's higher education institution. It is located at the distance of 470 kilometers south of Addis Ababa, the capital city of Ethiopia. In Oromia Regional State, as you may know, Ethiopia today has uh, 10 regional states among which the large and the, the largest and the most populous region is Oromia regional states. In West Guji zone, below in structurally in uh, Oromia regional states, there are more than 21 zones and it is found Blehora University is found in West Guji zone, Blehora town. It is on the corridor of, uh, from Addis Ababa, the capital city, to Nairobi, Kenya, the, on the main road to Nairobi, Kenya. The zone is in which our university is located is known for it is huge potential for mining activities like gold, silver, tantalum, huge forests, coffee, animal resource, and etc. Within the area, the establishment of Blehora University is creating a unique opportunity to produce competent graduates, research-based data and information to explore this indigenous resource as well as develop and sustain their peculiar ecosystem. Due to this potential location, Blehora University is aspiring to be a center of excellence in mining, animal production, and indigenous knowledge. Hence, it is, its goal is to be a center of excellence in mining, animal production, and indigenous knowledge by 2025 in East Africa and beyond. Currently, the university has eight running colleges and one school. The colleges are College of Engineering and Technology, College of Informatics, College of Natural and Computational Science, College of Health and Medical Science, College of Social Sciences and Humanities, College of Business and Economics, College of Agricultural Science, College of Education and Behavioral Science, and School of Law. In addition to that, our university has launched one special institute, an institute of Gada and Cultural Studies. Gada is an indigenous governing system in Oromo people of Ethiopia. All our colleagues are highly working towards the vision of the university. We have both graduates and undergraduate students. The objective of my speech to today is to address our interest in collaborating with the universities out there, uh, out there. So Blehora University is highly seeking to uh, create a cross-boundary linkage in order to create more opportunities for both collaborating universities. The area in which our university is seeking collaboration includes, but not limited to short and long-term trainings, research, various community engagements, and 
exchange students program. The university is also involved in huge community projects in, in order to support national development agenda, supporting in research uh, like hydropower, solar and wind and water energy that will nurture and enhance the national development objective of the country. The university seeks collaboration in this regard too. So the linkage will be helpful for economic, for political, cultural, and social interaction between the collaborating countries in which the institutes are. In addition to that, the collaborating university will be benefited from our huge intact potential resource if collaborate with Blehora University. Therefore, we highly seek any interested university and institutes, research institutes and uh, universities collaboration for mutual benefit. Uh, in addition to that, since its commencement, Bulehora University is an, an, an a third generation university in Ethiopia categorically. So it has been actively doing different research and community service activities and the mandate bestowed upon it by the law, Bulehora University has been conducting research, disseminating and publishing research outputs and innovations. Besides serving communities in different aspects, Bulehora University is providing national scholarship called Bariso Dukale Young Leaders Scholarship with the aim of solving the shortage of educated manpower in nearby zones and contributing to regional and national development work. The scholarship is named after the well-known and highly respected person called Bariso Dukale, who has contributed a lot in the Guji zone during the past half time. In addition to Bariso Dukale's national scholarship, Bulehora University has planned and badly doing upon expansion of program, both in graduates and postgraduate studies. With regard to this, Bulehora University has already approved a Komanoye International Research Scholarship under the Institute of Gada and Cultural Studies to provide postdoctoral research fellowship on Gada and indigenous knowledge. The pursuit and encouragement of excellent scholarship and research at Bulehora University is dependent principally upon the efforts of its academic and research staff members. The principal role of higher education institution in Ethiopia revolves around three main functions, namely advancement of knowledge through problem solving research and dissemination of knowledge through teaching learning process and providing demand based community services. As a result, since its commitment, Blehora University has been doing actively in aforementioned activities. Thus, Blehora University has the mandate bestowed upon it by law to conduct research, disseminate and publish research output and innovation. So the pursuit uh, and encouragement of excellent scholarship and research at Blehora University is, uh, as I've already mentioned, it is due to its active staff members. Therefore, the development of such research centers uh, as we have been in, uh, uh, launching different research centers in the area and the development of such research center can serve to attain the strategic objective of the university. For example, for creating a critical mass of researchers and increasing their potential impact, enhancing research collaboration, facilitating interdisciplinary research, increasing the visibility of research at Blehora University nationally and internationally, uh, increasing Blehora University's ability to secure funding for major research infrastructure and facilitating the linkage between research and education. In addition, the university is aimed to advance knowledge through creative research, innovation, and creativity across a wide range of academic disciplines to extend knowledge through innovative educational programs in which students and emerging 
scholars are mentored to realize their highest potential and assume roles of leadership, responsibility, and service to society, and to apply knowledge through local, national, and global engagement that will improve quality of life and enhance the economy of the country. So the research thematic area of the of Lehora University are animal production and health, plants production and protection, natural resource development, environmental protection and conservation, engineering, energy, computing and technology, mining, health and medicine, business and economic development, human and social development, quality education for sustainable development and indigenous knowledge. So the area under a species of Blehora University or in, in the southern part of Oromia Regional States, including Morana and Guji zones are identified for their potential in both natural and cultural resources. Organizant of this, the university has identified mainly to strategic, due to its strategic location, mining and environmental protection, animal and plant production and indigenous knowledge as its areas of excellence. As a public university with a major research mission of alleviating societal problems and contributing to uh, a country's development and democratization endeavors, Bulehora University strives to produce significant, scientifically sound, socially relevant, and empirically rich knowledge in the best to contribute to local, regional and the national agendas of addressing environmental problems and the livelihood challenge, as well as preservation of cultural heritage. Accordingly, research on this center of excellence are highly encouraged with the maximum resource capacity of the university to attain its overall mission and vision. Currently, the university, as I've already mentioned it with, we have eight colleges, one school and one institute, the Institute of Gada and Cultural Studies. The institute is working particularly on promoting and preserving Gada system and huge cultural potential in our community. We, Blehora University, are so proud to bring Gada system as an indigenous uh, government, uh, governing system to one of the field of studies launching Gada and Peace Studies in Master's Program and Gada and Governance Studies in PhD Program. We believe that it is our proud for both Ethiopia and Black Africans as well. As a university located in the heart of communities cherished by indigenous knowledge system and the rich natural resource, the university has identified and working on three areas of excellence, as already mentioned, indigenous knowledge, product, uh, animal production, mining. Lastly, I have recognized, and I, I, I have to recognize and appreciate all the participants and organizers who have uh, took initiative with us in arranging this historical research conference. Thank you very much for your listening. Can you hear me? Hello? Friends from, thank you very much, Chirac, for organizing this wonderful conference. And uh, we're very happy to be part of this. I'm working greatly together with the Management Institute from Warsaw University. So it has become a great teamwork by now. We invited more speakers for the next conference. I expect uh, maybe Frank and Joachim making their own presentation. I expect one or two uh, speakers from Paraguay. We made advertising around the world to support this conference. Um, for us, it's great pleasure to, uh, we're allowed to introduce our institute uh, where we cooperate here. And um, uh, it's a great opportunity to introduce our intercultural program here at this conference. It was our first common presentation in English. So I apologize for the English and um, we are still in the training and uh, 
that help us today to better form our international presentation skills and introducing our program internationally. Chuck uh, Patel, thank you very much for having us. And uh, we love to continue the work. I'm looking forward to the next conference. I think that's in November. That's right after my own conference that I was a little bit nervous because at present we organize our conference as well. And therefore I know how much work and effort you put together into uh, this conference, into the program, inviting all the speakers, taking care of all the speakers. And uh, so keep up the good work. We love to be with you the next conference again, and then hope to see you all again. Yes, definitely. Thank you. So I, I think uh, it, this one is over about 70 plus conference numbers because we are not putting any numbers in our conferences. Uh, we are just uh, uh, running with some series like international or union or yeah, like that. So thank you all for being with us in this uh, inauguration session. Uh, you can visit our websites uh, for more details about uh, here you can see. Uh, this is the Research Culture Society website uh, uh, for our upcoming programs. And uh, you can also observe our past programs. Uh, if you want to be join us, uh, here is the list with our speaker members of all the conference. Specifically, we have selected some speakers and their pictures, photos, their details, designations are available here. So all are welcome to join us for the tab uh, as the knowledge partner and with a memorandum of understanding with us. There is not any charge or fees for that. October 2021. For any modification or update and submission of final article or paper for publication. Publication process will start after all selected articles or papers converted as per standard publication format. Participants, presenters will receive e-certificate till 23rd October 2021. Hard copy of certificate and proceeding book after 15th November 2021. And online publication tentative date is 10th November 2021. We are very grateful for your presence with given time and efforts. Thank you so much for being present here. Our well wishes for the future collaboration and participation. Thank you so much.